The Third Great Awakening refers to a hypothetical historical period proposed by William G. McLaughlin that was marked by religious activism in American history and spans the late 1850s to the early 20th century. It affected Pietistic Protestant denominations and had a strong element of social activism. It gathered strength from the postmillennial belief that the second coming of Christ would occur after mankind had reformed the entire earth. It was affiliated with the social gospel movement, which applied Christianity to social issues and gained its force from the awakening, as did the worldwide missionary movement. New groupings emerged, such as the Holiness Movement and Nazarene movements, and Christian science. The era saw the adoption of a number of moral causes, such as the abolition of slavery and prohibition. However, some scholars, such as Kenneth Scott Lauderette, dispute the thesis that the United States ever had a Third Great Awakening. Overview This article focuses on the awakening that took place during the 19th century in America. So far, it also includes material about Korea. A similar awakening took place in Britain, identified by J. Edwin Orr as starting in 1859 with its influence continuing through to the end of the century, impacting church growth, overseas mission, and social action. The American Protestant mainline churches were growing rapidly in numbers, wealth, and educational levels, throwing off their frontier beginnings and becoming centered in towns and cities. Intellectuals and writers such as Josiah Strong advocated a muscular Christianity with systematic outreach to the unchurched in America and around the globe. Others built colleges and universities to train the next generation. Each denomination supported active missionary societies, and made the role of missionary one of high prestige. The great majority of Pietistic mainline Protestants in the North supported the Republican Party, and urged it to endorse prohibition and social reforms. See Third Party System. The awakening in numerous cities in 1858 was interrupted by the American Civil War. In the South, on the other hand, the Civil War stimulated revivals, especially the Confederate States Army revival in General Robert E. Lee's Army. After the war, Dwight L. Moody made revivalism the centerpiece of his activities in Chicago by founding the Moody Bible Institute. The hymns of Ira Sankey were especially influential. Across the nation, Dries crusaded in the name of religion for the prohibition of alcohol. The Women's Christian Temperance Union mobilized Protestant women for social crusades against liquor, pornography and prostitution, and sparked the demand for woman suffrage. The Gilded Age plutocracy came under sharp attack from the social gospel preachers and with reformers in the progressive era. The historian Robert Fogel identifies numerous reforms, especially the battles involving child labor, compulsory elementary education and the protection of women from exploitation in factories. All the major denominations sponsored growing missionary activities inside the United States and around the world. Colleges associated with churches rapidly expanded in number, size and quality of curriculum. The promotion of muscular Christianity became popular among young men on campus and in urban YMCAs, as well as such denominational youth groups such as the Epworth League for Methodists and the Walther League for Lutherans. <laughs> New religions Mary Baker Eddy introduced Christian Science, which gained a national following. The Society for Ethical Culture was established in New York in 1876 by Felix Adler and attracted a Reform Jewish clientele. Charles Taze Russell founded the Bible Students Movement. In July 1879, Russell began publishing a monthly religious journal, Zion's Watch Tower and Herald of Christ's Presence. He and his group of fellow students first identifying themselves as the People's Pulpit Association, then in 1910 as the International Bible Students Association. In 1931 after schisms within the Bible students and gaining control of the legal entity Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, Joseph Franklin Rutherford along with former members of the Bible student movement would go on to adopt the name Jehovah's Witnesses. In 1880, the Salvation Army denomination arrived in America. Although its theology was based on ideals expressed during the Second Great Awakening, its focus on poverty was of the third. With Jane Addams's Hull House in Chicago as its center, the Settlement House movement and the vocation of social work were deeply influenced by the social gospel. The New Thought movement expanded as Unity and Church of Divine Science were founded. Topic: The Holiness and Pentecostal movements. 
The goal of the holiness movement in the Methodist Church was to move beyond the one-time conversion experience that the revivals produce, and reach entire sanctification. The Pentecostals went one step further, seeking what they called a baptism in the Spirit, or baptism of the Holy Ghost, that enabled those with this special gift to heal the sick, perform miracles, prophesy, and speak in tongues. The rediscovered Pentecostal movement can be traced to the Ocoee Mountains in the Tennessee River Valley, annexed to North Carolina in 1886-1896 when a group led by Methodists minister Richard Sperling met and called for holy living. At that time they experience what is known as the baptism of the Holy Spirit, who empower the Christian to live in holiness. Little is known of this movement because it happens in the mountains, compared to the Azusa Street Revival which happened in Los Angeles, California. However, the organization born from that group led by Rev. Richard Sperling has grown today September 2018 to an international presence in over 200 countries around the world with a church membership of over 7 million Christians. It is known as the Church of God, with headquarters in Cleveland, TN. This organization has its own university named Lee University, and his own theology seminary, named Pentecostal Theological Seminary. Both accredited by ATS among other accreditations. The organization has many ministers with doctoral and master's degrees, renowned authors, scholars, missionaries and ordained women in ministry. Also, there is the group led by Charles Parham in Topeka, Kansas. He was also a Methodist minister who resigned to his ordination as a minister of his movement and began preaching about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He opened a Bible school and taught and preached to his students about the prophecy of Joel chapter 2 verse 28 not a thing of the past but for this days, the last days. During the last service of the year on December 31, 1899 while Parham was preaching he lay hands on a woman named Agnes Osman and she received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and began speaking in tongues and prophesied. This is the root of the better known revival in Azusa Street in Los Angeles, California 1906 led by William Seymour, an African-American student of Charles Parham. Template, Vasquez, 2018 Topic. Impact on Korea Chun Bae Im compared the evangelistic method and results of the Third Great Awakening in America with the Korean revivals of 1884 to 1910. Many techniques of the Second and Third Great Awakenings were transposed from America to Korea, including the circuit riding system of the Methodists, the Baptist farmer preachers, the campus revivals of the Eastern Seaboard, the camp meetings in the West, the new measures of Charles G. Finney, the layman's prayer revival, urban mass revivalism of D. L. Moody, and the student volunteer movement. I'm discovered four areas of influence from a comparison and analysis of the two countries' revivals, the establishment of tradition, the adoption of similar emphases, the incorporation of evangelistic methodologies, and the observation of the results of the revivals. The American revivals had a major influence on the Korean revivals, and the American revival tradition and enthusiasm toward missions helped Korean Christians develop their own religious experience and tradition. This tradition has influenced Korean churches even into the 21st century. Topic. See also Christian revival Christianity in the 19th century Ethnocultural politics in the United States Millerism Temperance movement Topic. References Topic. Footnotes Topic. Bibliography Topic. Further reading